Hello, my lovelies. So, I know it's been a while since I've been on. I've been super busy um, receiving treatments for an ongoing infection. And uh, good news, I am infection free. So, yeah, that's great. I went out and got my hair cut today. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready for the 4th of July. And I just wanted to address a topic that came up uh, this past week. I know I hadn't really said much lately. And then, like, out of the blue, I posted that I had unfollowed somebody that I had followed for a very long time. He was my second favorite YouTuber of all time. I followed him back since his beginning days when he had only like 29,000 subscribers. And um, I know there for a while he went on hiatus and just kind of disappeared on us. And I remained a faithful follower pretty much checking like two or three times a month to see if he had posted or said anything. And then um, a while ago, quite a while ago, over a year ago, he came back under a new name, you know, and stuff, and, you know, it made me feel even closer to him because I knew his name. I even became a member, like, paying real money. And an ongoing issue that I probably missed or ignored some red flags on because I just didn't want to see it is his attitude towards the autism community. And as you all know, my son, age four, he has level two autism requiring substantial supports and um, other issues going on, uh, including pica and children. Anyway, I, you know, of course, I've always been a huge supporter of the autism community. Even before my child came along, I um, got a certificate in early childhood development. And my study just coincidentally happened to be autism. I didn't know anything prior to then about autism. So I went and spent time with autistic children. And that's what my final report was on. My main study to receive my certificate was on autism and children. So it was, you know, my children joke that it was like a big, um, like a big heap of foreshadowing. <laughs> It's a little inside joke of ours. Of course, we love, you know, our little autistic to toddler. And, you know, it's just all in, you know, nothing to tease. It's just a family joke. But, you know, it kind of does seem like, I, it, you know, it was just, if you believe this sort of thing, destined to be. And I am thankful for the training I received during these years because it gave me insight and we were able to... Um, diagnose the autism early and you know very early before he was even two years old so you know I felt like we started off on the right foot and that's something that I will forever be grateful for but I noticed a trend and it finally came to a head these past couple days because his outtake on everything you know he does um, am I the asshole stories and when it came to stories, including autistic children, unfortunately, his take on everything was, even when it wasn't so, that the parent or the OP or original poster was always the asshole. And it was just like, unless they were going against the autistic child. And in that case, he praised their decision, even if it was highly exclusive and downright just cruel I noticed there was an ongoing trend where the parent of the autistic child was always just in his opinion supposed to stay away from the public we should keep our autistic children at home we should not have friends if we have rules in our home we're horrible people that we shouldn't expect guests to respect the rules in our home when it comes to our our autistic children and I just don't think that's fair. Now, if you were deaf or blind, he was all over that. You should learn sign language. You should learn how to adapt. You should learn to accommodate. And I agree. You should. I, I really do. 
if we're truly going to be an inclusive society, we should learn to accommodate all special needs, including autism. But when it came to autism, he didn't think that anybody should accommodate. Like, autistic children are just so annoying that you shouldn't have to accommodate for them. And I don't think that's true. Us parents of autistic children, we struggle as well. It's not just children with cerebral palsy or deafness or blindness or, you know, seizure activity. It's not just them. We, we're a society too. And I felt like sometimes we were being judged unfairly. And if you said anything, his... And now remember, I was paying money. I was a member. But people would attack me. And um, I was accused of being on crack. And being a Karen. And just downright being an awful person. Because I was standing up for my, my autistic child. Um, I've been accused of being a horrible parent to my other children, that I'm robbing them of their lives, which is simply not true, and being horrible to my guests because I have rules. This is my home, our home, and when you're a guest in our home, we expect you to obey certain rules. Now, unfortunately, in this YouTuber's case, he didn't agree a lot of times. I know one of the stories was the OP or original poster had rules in her home. They had just started implementing these rules and already they were seeing a positive change in their autistic daughter's life. And yes, it did include dinner. And yes, it did include having family members sit together at dinner as a family with no cell phones, no tablets, nothing to distract, just sitting down as a family and having dinner. And you would have thought that she had taken her children and hammered their hands to the table the way people were acting. You're taking away their freedom. They're going to go no contact with you. How dare you, you monster? And that's just simply not the case. They were just made to put away their electronic devices and sit down and eat a dinner like a family. And guests who came over were expected to do the same thing. And their children were expected to follow the same rules. And it was made to sound like they were just being horrible people to people who came into their homes. And I'm like, why is it okay for other people to set rules for their special needs children until it comes to autism? And then you're just supposed to throw your autistic child aside and just be like, you know, do they not understand the meltdowns? The I guess that's what it is. They don't understand the meltdowns or why there are meltdowns. They just see it as temper tantrums. They're not temper tantrums. A, a meltdown is so different. And it's not just because, oh, I'm not getting my way, so I'm going to scream and cry. It's more like, help me, I'm scared. I don't understand what is going on. And it just hurts your heart to see your child go through this. So, you know, if you have a problem with the autistic community, don't come at me. Because I'm not going to respond and I will block you. But if you have something positive to say, you know, if you know somebody who's autistic in your life or, you know, you, uh, you have an understanding of autism, you know, feel free to share. But please don't come at me with any hate. I, I just, I don't have time for all that. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is my autism child and I'm going to care for him just like I care for my other children. It may look different, but it's still love. And I love my children all the same. None of my children get left out. It just hurt my heart that he took this approach to the autism community, that parents should pretty much hide in shame with their autistic children because we shouldn't have guests. We shouldn't go out. We should be expected. We should expect to be ostracized. We should expect to lead lonely lives because we had autistic children. And people, we should expect hate from people for our autistic children because kind of like, he may sound like that's what we deserve. And I disagree. I'm sorry, but I just disagree with that 
decision. I mean, and I just don't feel that he has the right to judge the way he is. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that he was going through his own battle and people were accusing him of being a liar and being manipulative. And we stood by his side and backed him up. And then for him to attack, well, I felt like attack the autistic community because I don't know why. I don't know if it's a cultural difference. I will say this much. He's not American. I don't know if it has something to do with that. It's still hurtful and harmful to the community because we fought so hard and so long to get to where we at and to be inclusive for somebody to try to just dismiss us as Karens. It's hurtful and it's not right. And, you know, no matter the special need, a child is a child and they deserve to be treated with respect and with care and with love and they don't deserve to be judged and neither do the parents. So, you know, if you know somebody in your life, you know, be it a child or an adult, you know, if it's an adult, show them some love. If it's a child, you know, realize that the parents are probably struggling. Maybe a, hey, I, I understand you. I've got your back. You're loved. Do you need any help? Do you need somebody to talk to? Can make all the difference in somebody's life. So if you learn anything from this video, it's just keep an open heart towards people with special needs and the parents of people with special needs. They're people too. And sometimes just a little bit of care can go a long, long way. Um, I'm sorry this video is so short. I'm still really tired. You know, I had um, some infections that happened recently due to my lupus, and I have been on antibiotics um, several, and it really takes it out of you. Plus, ladies, you know how it is when Aunt Flo comes to visit. That's just tiring, too. And I'm a mother of three. So, for now on, or not for now on, for right now, see, my, my brain is so very tired. It's already checked out. It's, it's in bed already. <laughs> for right now, I am going to cut this short, but I do have things coming that I'm very excited about, and I can't wait to share with you. So I am going to wish you all a good night, and I love you, and I will see you very, very soon.